What's going on, gamers? Welcome back to the Gamers First channel. Today, we've got Sniper School with myself and Potato. Hello, how's it going? So, me and Mikowski are loading into Dead Cliffs right now, and we are going to talk about our top sniper tips. Not sure how many we have, but we're just going to show off some of those tips and show them in-game and show you why some of the tips are what they are. Yeah, I think we'll keep it to about uh, five tips or so. That way, it's surface-level stuff, nothing too deep. But today, we'll be sharing our top five most important tips for becoming a better sniper. So, starting us off, the number one most important important tip to becoming a good sniper is centering now you're probably wondering mac what the hell is centering centering is the art or act of lining up the ready kill at the head level before the opponent ever even shows himself on the map so one of the good ways you can actually practice this at home is exactly like what we're doing in this private match right here uh potato where are you on the map uh i am by the outside c flag okay so you're on c okay so yep. yeah let's just say let's say you want to peak garage right here this is a popular peak last week during trials so a good way you can practice good centering is this right here what you want to do is you want to slide out and right as you zoom in, you want to be at around the head level. As you can see right there, I was a little high. But ideally, your sniper should center in at the head level when you come around the corner. There was a little bit better example right there. Another one right here. Better potato dip behind the uh, the wall. Mm -hmm. and we'll show another example here. Hopefully, I can get this one down right. But this is what good centering looks like right here. All right, peek. There's perfect centering right there. You could see how my reticule never really adjusted up and down. It only adjusted left or right. And so when you do that, when you have good centering, you completely take out the effort on the y-axis you only have to aim vertically if you have good centering so that's definitely something to keep in mind well in addition to that more commonly that would be called crosshair placements from other games like counter-strike for example and valorant is where you Pre it's where you have your crosshair and the big thing about that is when you're doing crosshair placement or centering you have to learn how your opponents play and what angles you're peaking and your reaction time you have to take all those three into account so you don't want your crosshair too close to the wall because you're not going to be able to react fast enough so can you go slide out from down garage yep over there real quick so so my crosshair is at head level if you were to slide out, but it's too close to the wall, so can you slide out right now? As he slides out, I don't hit him because I'm holding the ankle too tight. Now you want to hold it to where you know they're going to slide out and you're going to be able to hit the shot. So from here, for example, if you slide out, since I was farther to the right, I'm able to hit that shot because I held it off the angle. But you also need to learn who you're playing against. For example, I'll use Walla as an example. He likes to be in the air a lot, so Mikaski, if you could come over here. This applies to everyone. If you know that the opponents you're playing are on Hunters and they like to jump around corners a lot, yep. instead of pre-aiming the ground, pre-aim higher up in the sky. So if they're jumping around the corner, you're going to be able to hit your shots rather than expecting a slide and them jumping up and just shooting at you for free, getting a free shot or two off before you can adjust your shot. And this could even be a, a, just a general tip, but I think it really works, especially for sniping. But the main thing is the variation. And we talked about earlier with the X, Y axis, but the variation and the split second it takes to adjust down or up or even head level, depending on where your opponent peeks around a corner, could make all the difference in a gunfight. So that's why it's so important, like Tato mentioned, to start jotting down notes in the back of your head. So like you said, Walla, he's cracked. He's usually jumping up, you know, on the ceiling. Onyx, you know, maybe his tendency is is to slide around the corner with a shotgun. So in that sense, you might have the reticle placed a little bit lower. Maybe you're playing against, you know, some <laughs> some bots and all they do is run around corners. You're going to place that reticle at head level more often than not if that's what their tendencies are. You just have to, as a player, start jotting down those notes at the start of a match and uh, rely on them when you expect an opponent to appear around a corner. Next up, building off of that, the second tip is that you have to be unpredictable when you're sniping. In terms of if you're playing against people, do not or try not to do the same thing twice. Sometimes it's good to do it two times, but never three times in a row. For yeah, example, so this... on Dead Quips, oh, go ahead. as Top Tree Dawn, if I had C-Spawn, the very first thing in a match I would always do against teams that do not know who I am is go out here, float on the outside of the map and hold this angle. If you watch the video that I made on Dead Quips, actually, this is a very solid angle that you can hold. But you do not want to keep doing that because it is easy to snipe someone out of the air if they're on the left side. They have no cover on the left side of the map. Yeah, and stuff I... like that, you do not want to be predictable. You do not want to repeat doing the same things. Yeah, because as important as your Discord comments, are you have to almost put yourself in the other discord right so if you're like you said floating off the map out there the other team's freaking out they're going he's in the sky he's in the sky and you caught him off guard for that round but if you go back to that the next round or the next gunfight it's going to be predictable and that really tough shot is going to be actually really easy now because it's expected i think another like common mistake some people make is sometimes you can slow peek around a corner maybe like this but if you're the guy that's always doing this slow peeking around a corner dude you're going to get sniped so easily so you got to switch it up man you got to hit him with the slow peek hit him with the yeah, this out. doesn't just mean this doesn't just mean like going to the floating out of the map spot. This applies to everything. For example, if you're sniping on a hunter and you're going to crack house every time and you're peeking this angle right here, they're gonna expect it. They're gonna have 
the top three down, just fly out here, get here before you, hold this angle, yep. and just pre-fire you. Lastly, on that note, I think if you're playing Trials, if it's 4-4 as a sniper, I love doing something I've never done that game and trying to almost get like the wide flank because everyone kind of tries to play out the 4-4 rounds, right? So it gives you that option to almost mm -hmm. like hit that wide flank. And I promise you, you'll start taking some opponents off guard with tactics like that. All right, so for our next tip, it's a simple one. Take the shot. It sounds like a simple tip, but it's really important because even if you were to miss, even if you like know for sure that you're probably going to miss the shot, you get valuable information when you miss a shot. You know how to rearrange or how to readjust your shot to hit it the next time. However, always take the first shot, but never ever take the second, third, fourth, fifth shot because you're not even going to be alive by the time you take that shot. So a good example of this right here is let's say you're sniping and you get the body shot down. He's so weak. You want to shoot him again. But here's the thing. You're not going to be able to. The TTK of most any weapon is going to have you down before you can get even another body shot in. So take the first shot always, but be careful when overextending or over peaking and overshooting that second or third shot because against most good players, it's not going to work out, right, Potato? Mm -hmm. And building off of that for the fourth tip, I'm going to go into uh, something called repositioning and why you shouldn't play the same angle twice. So McCaskey, if you could just crouch right here, for example. If the enemy knows exactly where you are as a sniper if you can just peek out say someone slides across and sees you it doesn't matter if it's a sniper or not they know where you're at you need to move your position if you don't move what's going to happen is someone's going to come out of the corner aim at where you're going to be exactly at your head level and just pre-fire you you cannot yeah, outreact to pre-fire in any game actually so unless you pre-fire back you are going to die every single time if you hold your position once they know exactly where you're at and to that point as a sniper think about the last positioning or direction your opponent saw you going in so it if you can actually do that again all right so let's say i'm here this is a pretty common sniper spot on dead cliffs all right so the last thing i saw potato do was go this way a lot of people will go and check this but what potato could do instead as a heady sniper as someone who's thinking about this tip right now what potato could do here as a smart player is peek back at that broken wall while i'm hard scoped like a goof and get the free snipe always think about what your opponent has seen last and do the opposite of that and to the point of repositioning it's not only to stop yourself from getting pre-fired it's to stop yourself from getting people pushing up on you from an angle that you can't shoot back at one of the most common calls you'll hear in high tier matches is where the sniper is at so the sniper dictates the pace of the game and if you know where the sniper is you can find a way around that sniper the best snipers always move around their position when the position is compromised for example if you know that their sniper is inside of this a house the depot up here you can very easily get close up to him and force him to take a close range engagement on the right side of the map if you can come over here if you know the sniper is inside of a you can force a close range engagement by pushing on the left of this wall using this cover and sliding out to this pillar right here and from here the sniper is nowhere near as effective yeah and building on that i guess this is kind of like i don't know this could almost be like 3a or 4 as a sniper you want to make sure that you peak lanes that only you can see through so what does that mean all right so let's say we've got an opponent here at broken wall we know that there's opponents here at B as well. This is a bad peak spot right here. Why? Because if I'm locked in on orange, the guy from Broken Wall or Rig can just absolutely obliterate me. I look clueless. Even if I were, you know, locked in on the guy at Broken Wall, knowing there's people at orange, <laughs> like, look what I have waiting for me. Yeah. Here's the crazy thing. By moving just two meters, I can completely change the pace and protect myself from ever dying. So what I'd want to do, instead of being on this wall right here, based on the information of where I know the opponents are, I'd want to come right here instead. So right down this lane is the only lane that I can see, and it's the only only lane that the opponents can see me as well. For our fifth and final tip, it may not necessarily be sniper specific, it might even just be more game sense oriented, but for our fifth and final tip, learn the spawns on the map and also understand and almost have like a feel in the back of your head for the timing of things like spawns, rotations, positioning, movement, whatever it might be. So the way spawns work in Destiny is actually very simple. There's three anchors on the map and they're determined based on whatever the control points are on different maps. So you can go on each of the maps in Destiny, load up control, and you will know immediately where the three anchors of spawns are in the game. It's extremely important to know that information. All right, so let's say we're pushing into A, right? We've got a sniper fight. Let's say we win the sniper fight and we wipe the entire team. Because of the death at A and the entire team being wiped at A, the spawn is guaranteed to be C. As a player, you need to be heads up. You need to be already pushing into C and setting up that centering. Look at that, boom. Every single map, this is gonna be the case. It doesn't matter if it's Dead Cliffs, Jav 4, Endless Veil, vale, you're always gonna have spawns flipping back and forth, provided there's a full wipe. If you don't have a full wipe, what spawns do you usually see instead? Is it usually like you might get beat? Depends on where the might... enemies are. And you can also force spawns if you push aggressively. If you know one person spawned at C, you killed both of his teammates. 
Cliffs. Or actually, yeah. a better example on Dead Cliffs is if you know there's two people alive and you just killed one and those two people are in C, very often people will push up as a full team and take control of this area down here or on the outside. And that'll force the person to not spawn at C and they'll spawn at A instead. And then they have one or two people go and kill the straggler over at A that spawned alone in trucks. Let's see even if you're, you know, all the competitive stuff doesn't really interest me. I don't play very much trials. You probably still at least play sixes, right? Or you probably still play any other game, right? <laughs> the thing about knowing spawns is that if you want to get a big clip, right, you're probably going to have to kill one or two people over again, right? Like if there's six people on a map and you want to get a, a slayer or a reaper, somebody's going to have to go down twice. And the only way you could ever hit that clip is by knowing the spawns. Yeah. So adding to that, in terms of the spawns, you need to learn how fast people can get out of the spawns and where they can be. Because radar has limited range. And if you know someone spawned somewhere, you can predict where they're going to be based on how long ago they spawned up. And you can predict where you're going to meet them for engagements, even at the start of the games, when it's most important. So on Dead Quest, for example, can you go back of A? Now go towards C. From where you spawned at in Trials, start running in at huh? seven minutes exactly towards the lane at B. And I'll start running there as well. And we can see when we meet up. So uh, three, two, one, go. This changes depending on what characters you have, but this, this gives you a general timing of when you're gonna meet people. So there you go. So if you're sniping and you're in McCaskey's eyes right here, you know that for the most part, if you go around that corner, people are going to be at around this area of the map at the farthest if you're going at about an equal speed. And especially if you're top three Dawn, you're gonna say, get yeah. there slightly sooner, unless they're also top three Dawn, and you're gonna see them when they're back here and you know where to pre-aim. So that's a really good tip because especially for maps like Trials where you've got just round by round by round, you can know based on which spawn you have and which loadouts are being used or which classes are on the other team, who's gonna get to that spot first. And a lot of times, first peak advantage is really big. Yeah, so one example I'll use is one peak from A site. I always do is I double clicker stash up and I take this angle right here. And I know there's going to be either people on the right side in this area or probably a hunter jumping in the air on the left on this wall. They always do it, hunters love jumping. So if I pre-aim the left right there, half the time gonna be just a free headshot because people think they're safe out in this angle because they don't know the timings of how fast someone can be here. If they knew the timings, they'd be ready for me, but they don't, and that just gets them killed. Yeah, and that's if you have that element of surprise, especially as a sniper, I mean, that's just GG's. All right, well, I think that'll do it for our first ever sniper school. Hopefully, you guys appreciated the five or so tips that we gave you guys. It's really, you know, like a basic understanding, not necessarily a deep dive, but a basic understanding of a few tips that you can take and immediately use to improve your sniping. I actually forgot about one quick thing, which is to not be afraid to body shot melee, I think is an important one. Oh, dude, that's like one of my favorites. You could use your sniper as a yeah. shotgun. Especially with Top Tree Dawn with this and current scenes, like that's one thing we could add as a bonus tip at the end. It's almost like it's like the 1A to the centering tip, I think, because good centering might be around the head level or, you know, anticipating where the head might be. I think good centering could also apply to something like the center mass no scope melee with sniping. So yeah. that's another good tip with centering is centering will always start to like help you know where that reticule is. A good way to practice it at home is let's just say like I'm going to guess that I'm zooming into the top left corner of pillar. Let's see if I let's see if I zoom in on it. Okay, so I'm a little off. I was a little off. That's a great way that you at home can practice your centering and just start to, you know, help identify where the reticule is in relation to where I want the scope to be. All right, I think that's it, Guardians. Appreciate all you guys tuning in. Hopefully you guys learned something about sniping in this video. Let us know in the comment section if you watched this video and then took it into the crucible, how it did for you. Let us know how the tips worked for you in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.